customer acquisition and how we are retaining our customers. Now we have seen till now what do we mean by CRM. So what we can understand, uh, what we can understand after studying the first unit is that it is basically a marketing tool. It's an it's an effort from the marketing department from the marketing angle where we are trying to keep our customers with us for a longer period of time. So it is not only uh, basically it is not for uh, the customers who are in and out of you know, doing business with us. But sometimes it happens that once or twice customers do purchase our products and then uh, maybe they shift or uh, they don't like our products or uh, you know, they get some lucrative uh, offers from our competitors. So over a period of time, they lose or they discontinue using our products. So we are not talking or these efforts are not for such customers who are not doing business with us. So that is what CRM is all about. We have seen the uh, uh, the, uh, the types of CRM, how it can be implemented. Then we also saw some of the theories. Now starting with the next unit, it talks about the, um, we can say that um, major topics of general marketing as well, how we are acquiring and how we are retaining. We use these words frequently customer acquisition and customer retention, right? So we are starting with that. Now let us begin our session with the acquisition part, customer acquisition. If we acquire, then only we'll retain them. So acquisition of new customers and understanding what uh, value these customers hold for a marketer. So usually speaking, acquiring meaning gaining, huh? to get something, to acquire meaning to get or to gain something. So when we are in the process of gaining new customers, whatever efforts we are putting in to get new customers attracted to us, that is called as acquisition, customer acquisition. It is the process of bringing new customers or clients to your business. Some successful customer acquisition strategies include customer referrals, then loyalty programs and sales. So this is roughly what we say about acquiring our new customers. So it's a process of uh, or the efforts which include to bring these customers to us is referring the customers. Suppose I am a happy customer. I am satisfied with the way Reliance Fresh is serving me. So next time when a friend of mine asks me that, um, um, tell me from where you purchase your monthly grocery. So I would rather say that uh, online is the option, but if you have to go offline, maybe you can think of Reliance Fresh because of so and so things. Maybe the services are good. Less time we have to spend while standing in queue uh, at the billing counter. The quality is good. Uh, the store atmosphere is nice. The staff is also very, uh, you know, of very uh, helpful nature. So because of these things, I usually prefer going to the Lions Fresh. So I am referring somebody to visit the Lions Fresh. So that is uh, uh, through customer reference. And in this way, the uh, referring customers uh, become our uh, process or we can say that this is the um, efforts the Reliance Fresh is putting in to acquire new customers. Loyalty programs, yes, if you swipe your card or if you, uh, uh, you know, continuously shop with us for 11 months, probably the 12th month's grocery would be supplied at your doorstep at free of cost. So these are our uh, loyalty programs lead towards acquiring new customers. Now, what uh, this acquisition gives me, it allows the business to make money to meet costs, pay employees, and reinvest in growth. Now, when I have new customers, huh, so meaning my base is increasing, hmm, number of customers who are dealing or number of people who are transacting with me, hmm, that is what is acquisition. So, is a class of that. I can make money to meet my cost. If new customers are not coming in, I'm doing business with the same or the steady uh, base of customers, then whatever costs I'm putting in, 
आई वॉन्ट बी एबल टू मीट दम प्रॉपरली सो उसके लिए आई नीड टू इंक्रीज माई कस्टमर बेस दैट इज वॉट इज एक्विजिशन सो वेन आई हैव मोर नंबर ऑफ कस्टमर्स डूइंग बिजनेस विथ मी इट एक्चुअली कैन हेल्प मी मीट माई कॉस्ट डे टू डे कॉस्ट विच आई एम इनकरिंग मे बी दोज कॉस्ट कुड बी प्रमोशनल कॉस्ट और एडवर्टीजमेंट कॉस्ट और यू नो ऑपरेशनल कॉस्ट लाइक वॉट एवर प्रोमो मटीरियल आई प्रिपेयर आई नीड टू पे फॉर इट सो दोज कॉस्ट कैन बी मेट वेन आई हैव नो इन फ्लो ऑफ कस्टमर्स I can pay my employees a salary also. Uh, I can reinvest in and I can reinvest in growth. Now, if I have to grow my business, now, just like PLC, huh? Curve. So I am in that introductory stage. Um, I have launched my business now through uh, you know heavy publicity. I put in money and slowly and steady, I see that now the customers are increasing. So I now need to. Go in the next step. That is the growth step. Customers are there; they are doing business with me. But now, what is the next step? Is that I have to grow. Maybe I have to open uh, another shop, or I have to, you know, uh, increase the um, offering. पहले अगर मैं I only deal with grocery. Now I think of having some general store items as well, or I think of starting a small stationery shop like that. So. Uh, to reinvest in growth, I need to have money, and that can come only by having good amount of customers who are new to me. So, uh, by acquiring new customers, it also allows business to show evidence of traction. Now, what do we mean by traction? Traction is uh, uh, here. It means that to get attraction to you know to. Uh, Tell somebody that even I exist to attract somebody. That is what traction means. So I uh, this acquisition in uh, acquisition as in the process where you you tell the outside parties that see this is how my numbers are increasing. This is how my uh, customers are increasing. So it acts as an evidence of traction. So based on that. Investors or let's say the partners or influencers feel that yeah, all right, whatever she is saying that my business is growing, she is proving that. How 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 am I proving that by showing them the results that probably last year this was what the customers we were uh, dealing with, and now we have acquired so many number of new customers. Maybe in case of um. Uh, uh, If I have to take the example, maybe IT companies can be the very good example. Earlier, uh, sales people uh, <clears throat> last year, for example, sales people showed that um, we pitched, let's say, twenty companies, and out of these twenty companies, fifteen are now on board with us. They are ready to do business with us. So, these fifteen new customers. i can show them as proof that this is what we have acquired in the last year which becomes a traction for investors partners and my influencers so acquisition say what i achieve i achieve two things whatever daily um, costs which i am which i have to pay which i have to incur that money i can get by acquiring new customers because they are going to do business with me at least once or twice they are going to do transactions with me so out of that once or twice i am not saying that they will not go beyond one or twice definitely this is we are talking about acquiring so once we acquire new customers i can meet my cost i can pay my employees and i can also show this as proof to the ones who are going to invest so i can tell my investors i can tell my board members that whatever efforts we are putting in whatever heavy amount we are putting into marketing this is the result this is the whole new set of customers who are going to do business with me so this is what i achieve out of acquisition So being able to systematically attract and convert new customers keeps companies healthy and growing 
and investors have. So my whole and sole objective of acquisition is that that I can systematically acquire or attract the customers and convert them into new customers. Us say I can keep companies. I can keep my company as a healthy and a growing one. Healthy because customers are coming in. They are doing business with me. Few of the dissatisfied customers are even though they are going out of my company, but still I have inflow of customers and investors also happy. Now we are starting with something called as customer value. What value customers have or we have seen what is acquisition. So when we are acquiring, when we are in the process of uh, taking new ones, new customers on our board, that is called as acquisition. But then this new ones or the new customers, why it is important, what value they hold from a company's point of view is what we are going to see now. Is it clear? Are you guys with me? I hope you are with me. So understand what is this value, customer value. Customer value is the perception of what a product or service is worth to a customer versus the possible alternatives. Perception, belief. So we are believing here that what a product or service is worth to the customer. So I am imagining here, I am perceiving that so and so products worth to the customer would be what? If I am launching, let's say, new notebooks. Now customers would be, now notebooks, basically the school going kids are my base of customers. So it's worth, what would be it's worth to the kids? Now, maybe the kids who are in third or fourth or fifth grade, maybe for them, the uh, covers are very much important. Maybe they are fascinated. The kids are fascinated um, by including cartoon characters or maybe the Avengers or you know um, such such um, such characters. They get attracted and you know probably my sales would be high. But when we are talking about kids who are uh, maybe in eighth or ninth or tenth grade, maybe that I have to replace with something. Maybe I can include uh, something, you know, technology or, uh, you know, such topics I can think of putting on the cover of the books, notebooks. So in understanding the customer value, this is what I perceive. That what would be this particular notebooks worth to my customers, how they are going to look at the notebook versus the possible alternatives which I have. So when I understand this, meaning I'm actually trying to figure out the targeted customer's worth or value. How do I calculate if I have to uh, do it with the help of mathematics? How do I do it? The value of customer, or customer value is equal to what benefits you are going to give reducing the cost which you are going to put. Maybe the benefits you know, by putting pictures of uh, these uh, Avenger characters, uh, one or two or all, hmm? maybe um, printing and um, um, you know, those uh, jazzy colors and um, you know, the, the good quality of pictures when I'm using and how much it is going to cost. This subtraction will give me the worth or the value what customers are going to see, assume, of my product. Value for one customer may not be the same as another. Obviously, person to person, preferences and needs are changing. So are the values. So for one customer or let's say for second or third grade um, standard students, the value which uh, they expect from their notebook or they expect from the uh, front cover of their notebook would not be same as six, seven, eight grade school going kids. 
depends from customer to customer, person to person. It is created, the value is created through the development and improvement of the processes. How do I create this value in the minds of the customer? By developing, by continuously, uh, you know, uh, we can say reinventing and improving your processes. So maybe the current trend is um, maybe the Pokemon or such cartoon characters. Maybe next or maybe after next to next years, it would get replaced with something else. So I need to continuously understand how this market is changing, how this market is uh, getting influenced. So continuously developing and improving my processes, improving the printing process, uh, making some innovative changes like ITC is the one uh, who gives us this opportunity to have uh, the front cover of your own choice. So they have provided the website where you can uh, put your, you know, you can upload your uh, favorite picture or something and then the further processing which is taking place. So in this way also you can come up with some innovative processes. Now though the product would uh, be going to cost me let's say some 20 rupees or 30 rupees, if I go for such innovative ways, maybe it will cost me some 10 or 15 rupees more but then that is the requirement of some people that I want the personalization in my notebooks as well. So you can give that, but then how you arrive at this conclusion is through continuously developing yourself and improving the processes. And that is what we do in valuing our customers. To the customers, the benefit can also vary, which can shift the value. Again, from company's point of view, what we just now discussed that by continuously developing and improving your processes, you can create value. But for me now, as a customer, how I can get myself valued from the companies, the benefit can also vary, which can shift the value. Maybe for one set of customers, these are the uh, you know important factors. Maybe for another one, uh, some se another set of uh, expectations which they have. So that is what uh, the customers look at value. Now these benefits hmm, which we are we have discussed about so I'll discuss from customers' point of view. What those benefits could be? Uh, for some people, it is quality of the product. For some people, it would be the advantages of ownership. For some it would be image. So based, you now what I'm trying to say here is this, is that this based on these benefits, the customers can shift their values. Customers can shift uh, or, you know, switch from one uh, preferred company to another. For example, if I have to go for online purchasing of apparel, I, for me, the important factor would be the... Uh, or maybe the quality, whatever you are showing in the image, I should be getting the same kind of cloth is what I expect. If um, maybe mantra is failing in this regard, maybe I cancel that option out. So how I value that company as that they are not giving me what they are promising. So they are you know, going to compromise in case of quality. So they supply me some different so, you know, so they, they have some variations in terms of uh, the uh, look and feel of the product is what I believe. And then I change myself from Mindra to maybe some other person. So this is what from customer's point of view, value is. So how do I define value? How a customer defines value is based on these six to seven different factors like quality of the product, ownership advantage, image, company brand and its affiliation, access to the solution, experience. When I visited a particular website, how my experience was? If suppose the experience was pathetic, I could not find easily what I wanted to find or maybe the, you know, the structure of the website was so poor that, uh, you know, loading time was more. It, it didn't load in 
seconds time maybe in 3 4 seconds time it took long uh, for it to load the images probably they uh, you know uh, uploaded some high resolution images that is why it took time for uh, for that website to get loaded but then that was what my experience was as a customer so i simply cancel it up success from use of the product or service long term takeaways like that. so these are some benefits customers look based on these benefits they may change the service provider and that is what is customer value the manufacturer sources of customer value now customer value can only be influenced you can never control the value of your customers you can in only influence you can only change but then you cannot guide as a marketer when you are into uh, beverages food and beverages industry if you belong to no you are understanding the customer value but you cannot control the people's mind your customers mind that since i am manufacturing this you have to accept it if uh, you know mccain company like mccain who is into uh, they are serving you know some four five variations they have in terms of aloo tikki and burger patty like that but then they cannot control the um, taste they cannot control or they cannot make customers go only for mccain they cannot do uh, they can always influence they can create this kind of influential advertisement where they can hammer on our mind that whenever you are thinking of you know that choti choti boom you can think of mccain when people are partying you don't want to spend much of time or uh, you know in kitchen please use so and so company's products it will save your time you can make influential advertisements but this value creation cannot be controlled value is created just as much by a focus on processes and systems as much as it is by mindset and culture so basically the mindset and culture is something we have to focus when we are in the process of creating value to our customers what are the sources of value when i have to create value to my customers what are these sources being innovative in product design so innovativeness can really bring change up you can keep this thing in mind innovation or innovativeness in all the fields can really make a difference so this innovativeness could be in terms of product design or you know service delivery n number of factors are there where we can bring this innovation another source would be following rigorous quality while manufacturing so innovativeness focusing on innovativeness and uh, second would be strictly maintaining the quality if it's a quality product no matter what it will definitely create some kind of value we have this label then you know jaise kya bolte aankh band karke when we believe somebody that is because of the quality that we know that so and so manufacturer will never go wrong that will never compromise on quality so following rigorous quality while manufacturing will really create a difference keeping golden mean of price and quality striking a balance between what you are uh, you know committing to give and at what cost you are giving handling efficient supply chains it is being said in marketing that in today's scenario where you can really create a difference is this supply chain how well you are managed a supply chain meaning reaching your customers in simple terms may if i have to explain what the supply chain is meeting or uh, you know um, giving away your products in a lesser span of time how efficiently you do let those customers uh, let those customers be a uh, regular customer or a business b2b or yeah b2c or how efficiently and how in minimum period of time you meet your requirement you Uh, reach your customers out is what is the effective or a successful supply chain so when you can successfully handle this you know again you can create 
value to your customers. Cooperating closely among suppliers. Very important angle, suppliers are. So when you are closely dealing with your suppliers, understanding their requirements and supplying the products to these suppliers as efficiently as you can, you can really create customer value and meeting your expectations of your customers. So when we are talking about this customer value, you know, giving something to your customers, meeting their requirements, satisfying your customers, understanding their needs and requirements, we all are talking about one and only thing and that is customer value. So when we are talking about this, this value has got some components. Customer value has got some components. What those components are? Uh, this value can be created by focusing on what you are. Mm. So manufacturing firms are basically, they can focus on the product. Similarly, the ones who are dealing with service industry, they are focusing on the services. Then what image you have? In the, in the market or on the in the minds of the consumer and the pricing. So these are very important four elements which really create some kind of value, customer value. So let's understand these images, uh, not images, these components quickly. Now when we say about product quality, product which is a tangible thing, big panel. So what tangible features customers are evaluating. Those are called as product quality. If I have this pen in front of me, it's a tangible thing. So how do I evaluate its quality? Maybe I write. By writing, I come to know that the product, uh, you know, it, it, I can write smoothly. Uh, my handwriting is also good when I, uh, if I write with this, with this pen, and um, its grip is also good so i can i can firmly uh, write when i hold this pen like this so this is how we evaluate so this is how we uh, try to figure out the quality of the pen now again this quality is two dimensional it has got two um, angles to look at it now this first angle would be um, something like which is visible for example, uh, uh, if you are visiting a store, basically the Reliance Fresh ka example, later, when I visit this particular store, I find that the location is good. The prime location, pe hai. Uh, I have got good uh, parking facility available. Uh, it is quite easily accessible from my place. I can reach in five or ten minutes time like that. So these are the characteristics related to the store. Then there are some, uh, the second angle in product quality is related to the product itself. Ek to isse related or ye mene jahan se purchase kiya usse related. So these are the two angles in case of product quality. So first from where I got this, we just now discussed how accessible it is, how um, convenient that is for me. Second is related to the product, like what kind of, uh, just a Reliance Fresh, what kind of assortment, what kind of variety it is offering. Variety, uh, for simple, simple um, ATA, if I have to purchase, I have some five, six brands which are available at any point of time. And assortment, uh, the same products are available in a, in a convenient packing, maybe 1 kg, 2 kg, 5 kg, 4 kg, like that and available at all the time. So this is how I look at product quality. So when we are, the, man, the marketer is in the process of understanding the value of our customers, this is how uh, we study the product quality. So we should see to it that what benefits the product is offering and where that product is available, how that place is, what kind of a value that place is offering to my customers. So product quality. Then we have service quality. Service, uh, 
what services you can deliver like um, call center assistance how it is in a customer complains you know calls and uh, um, uh, you know uh, give away his complaint or give away his satisfaction dissatisfaction sorry related to a particular product how it is being handled are you handling it rudely or are you patiently listening how your call center guys are are they well educated are they uh, you know uh, have enough product knowledge uh, what is the process of recording the complaint how how much time uh, you take to re issue or uh, to resolve the issue so this is the quality service quality which we are discussing so maybe the how the cashiers are how trained those cashiers are or reliance fresh cashiers are how they are accepting cash how they are dealing with maybe sodexo or uh, you know credit or debit card like that so how how they are being trained so service quality man this is what we are talking about since product remains homogeneous much difference can be created in terms of service quality product remains the same if i am selling uh, you know suppose i am uh, hindustan liver hll ka sales person i am and uh, cab brands so maybe that annapurna belongs to itc suppose now uh, i am an itc guy and i have to figure out how the um, annapurna as atta brand is performing so annapurna can be available at chota sa kirana shop same time it is available online huh? Uh, online grocery shops. Similarly, the same product is available at Lions Fresh or Big Bazaar and other retail outlets as well. So, product is going to remain the same. But how your services are? How a Kirana person is promoting? When somebody asks, "Ki uh, we am je uh, atta chain," so which one he says, "Ki ye le lo, ye acha hai, fresh hai, ya what?" When online. are you uh, displaying any um, you know special promotions for annapurna if it is available in the um, stores right in the reliance fresh how you are managing your shelves so this is what is service quality we are discussing so product being homogeneous remaining unchanged only difference we create in the minds of the customers is how well we are serving them so this is what is service quality angle in customer value then comes price price factor we have um, everyday pricing then accepting credit card then you know promotional financing so these are ways of tackling our prices jaise ki big bazaar mein um, Wednesday was a day where you used to get some discounts. Earlier it was, so women's Wednesday, women's day, yeah, I say, which for a they used to call it as, and basically just to attract customers, they used to lower the prices by one or two rupees on some specific days. So these are the promotional ways, but this is how you uh, uh, carry out promotions by talking about pricing more. Then comes image. image when customers cannot evaluate all the three you know as a customer maybe i don't know how to talk about product product remains the same if i if i purchase it from kirana store or online annapurna is going to remain the same so i cannot differentiate based on its availability the, the product service Kirana person delivers at my place nowadays. Everybody is uh, going for uh, on, you know online shopping and home delivery. So Kirana person also, if I hand over him the list in the morning, he delivers it in the afternoon. Maybe more fast. Maybe within two hours time or something. So service wise also I am okay. Pricing same. जो भी online available है वो ही Kirana person के पास भी available है. So pricing wise also it doesn't. create much of difference so when such is the scenario when customers are unable to differentiate based on earlier just now which we discussed parameters you can really create value by focusing on this fourth factor and that is image and this image of uh, company's image or store's image 
it can take any form completely driven by customers now some people look at the store image the way the staffs are being dressed if i find that the uniforms are good you no know, trendy uniforms even even girls are wearing you know, you know trousers and neatly dressed up with proper hairdo and all i simply like that atmosphere i prefer it i i have this positive image in, in the in my mind maybe if they play um, you no know, if they may say cafe jaisa jazz or you know light music which is not at all disturbing but it's it soothes me so it calms me down if such is the music which is being played probably it creates a good image in my mind maybe the ads which uh, they have put up in their store if i find them attractive if i find them meaningful you know it can also create some positive image maybe the innovativeness uh, uh, in terms of the way they sell or the way they display their products so point is this image can take any form image of you in the minds of the customer can take any form and that is the last component which really creates value customer value so this image factor is also very important now we are going to see how we can derive value from different uh, angles values from product how you derive value from product price so warren buffett has really given a nice quote price is what you pay i am a customer suppose i have to pay so the 10 rupees what is price but in return of that 10 rupees what i get as a customer is what is called as value so 10 rupees mein i get world class experience so this world class experience is called as a value of that product to me so what values we can give by selling our product and now why we are studying this why we are understanding customer value because we have to acquire them and don't forget that we are learning customer acquisition when we want to practice crm so how we can acquire new customers by giving something hmm? that is why this quote is there price is what you pay value is what you get so what a uh, value you wish your customers should get by buying your product that is what we are looking now at the customer's perception of the ratio of benefits received to the sacrifice made by purchasing a product or service from the business so that is what customers look at value which they get from product so this is basically a ratio in mathematical expression where the, the denominator or numerator mein jo kya place kare numerator mein the benefits which i receive by sacrifices which i made by purchasing a product or service from the business so what benefits i am receiving if the benefits are more and the sacrifices are less it will increase this perception of customers uh, value which they are getting from the product if the benefits are lesser and the sacrifices which i have to make are higher then the value would be less the perception and i find that it's not worth purchasing here because एक दो ही चीजों में मुझे बेनिफिट मिला सपोज आई एम परचेसिंग दिस क्या बोल सकते हैं एम आई का कुछ नोट मे बी फोर्टीन और फिफ्टीन ऑनलाइन सो बेनिफिट विच आई गॉट वॉज आई गॉट अ एकदम मतलब लेटेस्ट मोबाइल इन द मार्केट एट अ रिड्यूस प्राइस कम्पेयर टू स्टोर दैट वॉज ओनली द बेनिफिट बट देन सैक्रीफाइस विच आई मे बी आई सिंपली वेस्टेड थ्री फोर आवर्स because i had to log in by 12 o'clock so in order to avoid that congestion at 12 o'clock i logged in to the site from 11 o'clock or let's say from 10:30 and i was continuously monitoring kya ho raha hai kya ho raha hai i uh, did not do anything in that one one and half hour so the sacrifice which i made and that too 
this I didn't do for one day. I was continuously doing it for 15 or 16 days or maybe 10, 5, 10 days. So I really wasted a lot of time. And I could save only 1,000 rupees or 2,000 rupees. So it's not worth. So this is this, this type of conversation which we, we usually hear. So that is what is value the customers are looking out when they are purchasing a product. It is the benefit that customer gets by using a product to satisfy his or her needs minus the associated cost. This is the simple equation for product value. Benefits the customer is getting by using the product to satisfy minus the costs which are associated. That is what is you know, value for on the product. Benefits are, let's say, 10 benefits. Minusing the associated cost, if I figure it out, it comes out to be 7. So, 10 minus 7, so 3 rupees is what is the value from the product. Just to make you the, uh, the concept clear. Be sure you aren't reminding your customers about what they paid for. Instead, remind them about the intention behind their purchases and improved status quo. So, when we are creating value, when I have to create value for my customers, or just the restaurant, I'm a restaurant owner and I have to create value for my customer. So, what I can do here is being manager, I should not remind them that, see, you have made 6,000 purchase, you should be happy. How will he be happy? I have spent 6,000 rupees. So, something has gone from my pocket, I won't be happy. But Instead of this, the, the restaurant manager should remind them the intention behind the 6,000 rupees. You know, you spend 6,000 rupees, but then the kind of ambience we provide, the kind of services, the kind of, uh, you know, the image we have in the market, how your status would be improved. Status as in, you can proudly say that yesterday night I had dinner at you know, so and so place automatically people will you know start looking at you from a different angle so this is what you can tell your customers this is what is value of uh, you know of what you are offering to your customer so don't say that so much you have spent on instead you should tell what they got in return of spending so and so and how it has helped in changing the uh, no, uh, maybe improving the status quo, the current position. When buying something from a large, fast, casual restaurant, what is the value of this product? The price is clear. For rupees X, we receive fast, filling, and tasty. Meal. Is the, exactly what we have just now said. Six thousand is not something which you should put more stress on. In return of that six thousand, what you got? What experience you got? How it is going to help you in future? that is something which we need to communicate to our customers. The value, however, is satisfying your hunger efficiently. You can't assign a value to a product based on price of each single ingredient. Value, however, is satisfying your hunger efficiently. Now, again, this is beyond consumption. Food is there which we consume. All right. But then, there is something more than this hunger. There is something called as satisfaction which we get by consuming the food. And that is nothing but the value created by the manufacturer. So this perceived value is impact minus cost divided by risk. In the simple calculation. Now this impact is emotional and analytical end state vision of the buyer. So what impact is there on our mind. So this is related to the uh, emotional and analytical end state vision. Emotional would be, you know, first time uh, I came here with my friend. So that memories are lingering in your mind. So that is the emotional impact you, you have. Analytical, you, you simply analyze that. You know, in such, um, you know, at, in such a price, I get so and so things, which otherwise are not possible. So, this emotional and analytical feelings are nothing but the impact minus cost. Uh, the cost of everything that you must be purchased or allocated or incurred to realize this goal, so which you are actually spending. My, so, 
this impact minus cost, what figure you get, divided by the risk. Risk discounted by various factors that could derail benefits realization or uh, create buyer uncertainty, whatever it is. Not probably you didn't enjoy the food at all. It was not as it is usually. Uh, maybe it was overcrowded, so I had to wait. So it simply, you know, destroyed my uh, mood or something. So this is the risk. So this equation, this value is uh, in this way, taking these three factors into consideration and in this way, we can calculate the value. So this was, this was what values we get uh, by looking at the product. Values from services. Service is any performance, experience or act that one party can offer to another and that is essentially intangible and does not result in the ownership of something. So how do, we, how do we define service? Again, it's an intangible thing. Now we cannot see services. So how, we, how do we uh, calculate services or how do we measure it? How it performs? How, you know, if we go to a salon, how, how well the person, uh, you know, how efficiently he is, he is doing his job. So how he is performing. What experience I get by visiting that particular salon, whether the experience is good, it is outstanding or it was below average, it was quite compromising. So based on these, we derive or we calculate values. So how services add values? How when you, suppose you are a person from service industry, same food industry or banking industry or airline industry, and when you have to think of acquiring new customers, how can you do that? How you can uh, give away value through the way you offer or the way you serve your customers. So those services can add value by providing it on timely basis. So timely serving your customers. Place where your uh, uh, service outlet is. So just I'm going to say, conveniently placed here. Bohat hi crowded hai. We don't have enough parking uh, facility available. So because of that crowdedness, crowded um, uh, area where you are located, you are unable to come up or unable to give such things. So place also really matters form what is the form maybe you are available online only you are available on both platforms or you are only available offline so abhi scenario mein, this is what form we need how quickly you are solving the problems how efficiently how timely you are tackling your issues and experiential value to the customers the utility value of the services which you are providing to the customers. So we can create new set of customers. We can acquire customers by following these five parameters when we are from service industry. Values from people whom we deal with. Dealers and managers are certainly key among the people needed for CRM success. Now, People driven, CRM is a people driven approach. Somebody has to implement, so somebody has to deal with customers. So, somebody, are, you know, what I mean, somebody here is maybe the dealers, or Joki Bhat Bhat, managers who are internal or who are working for the organization. So, the ones who are in direct contact with the customers and the ones who are supplying the information to these touch points, contacting persons. So these are the people. Now when I have to acquire new people, new customers, this is what I look at the ones who are going to deal with these new customers. So dealer and manager. Services vary as to whether it is equipment based or people based. When I am acquiring new customers, the kind of services which I offer, they vary, they change. Sometimes the services which I offer are based on equipments. Vending machine, 
जैसे कि सपोज मैकडोनल्ड का एक टेक अवे काउंटर है नाउ आई एम सर्विंग कस्टमर्स हियर एंड समबडी नाउ पीपल यूजुअली यू गेट कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री ड्रिंक्स आल्सो एंड यू नो दैट हैप्पी मील में एंड ऑल देयर इज दिस सॉफ्ट ड्रिंक्स व्हिच आर इंक्लूडेड व्हिच आर पार्ट ऑफ सो वेंडिंग मशीन इज डेफिनेटली इज पार्ट ऑफ व्हाट यू आर गोइंग टू ऑफर सो if that vending machine is underperforming some way if it is not uh, maintained properly there is taste variation or you know quality is not up to the mark something like that so it is really going to affect your services so services vary as to whether it is equipment based or if it is people based who is going to serve account services or people who are at the cash counter how they are dealing there customers dealing with their customers so if it is equipment based or people based your services are going to vary chances of losing are based on these two factors also that is why chances of acquiring are also based on these two factors people based services vary by weaker unskilled skilled or professional workers provide them so how हाउ यू नो जैसे कि हम लोग मैनेजर्स या सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स की बात कर रहे हैं सो दिस इज हाउ दैल्यूज फ्रॉम पीपल चेंजेस इफ द स्टाफ विच इज गोइंग टू टॉक विच इज गोइंग टू सर्व द कस्टमर्स इफ दे आर नॉट स्किल्ड अप टू द मार्क नो दे लैक इन देर लैंग्वेजेस और दे लैक लैंग्वेजेस एज इन दे लैक इन देर कम्युनिकेशन मे बी इन देर अप्रोच uh they have lesser product knowledge they are not skilled they are not presentable so these factors matter a lot so definitely it is going to hamper your business in a positive and in negative ways also so when you are trying to acquire new people you are trying to acquire the customers and this is how this people factor uh maybe can affect in positive or in negative ways so when we are dealing with these people internal or external this is how the scenario is so proper training uh, proper uh, domain knowledge uh, interpersonal skills is something which need to be taught to these people when you are acquiring new ones physical evidence values from physical evidence customers often rely on tangible cues or physical evidence to evaluate the service before its purchase and access or uh, and assess their satisfaction with the service during and after consumption so even though it is service but then definitely its evidence physical evidence is must that is what the point is telling us so even before its purchase i need to have some kind of physical evidence so these reviews is like physical evidence here so if i have to purchase something online i look at the product features jo ki likhe hue mujhe dikhte no 1.5 ka ye hai suppose a new laptop when i have to purchase i check its memory i check the uh, processor i check um, other details and i come to know that okay this is a average model or let's say this is a good model in this particular range but then i also look at reviews hmm? company ne to apne taraf se sab bata diya what is what is there and what is not there but then i also need to hear from users how was their experience uh, of using so and so product so when we this is how the companies are creating values through physical evidence few elements of physical evidence are location design equipment used air quality lighting noise music employee dress code parking situation colors furniture business uh, card card stock and all so this is how i am trying to create the difference to ma- you know difference while acquiring the new customers when i am trying to give away some kind of evidence when i am serving them product companies have to physical evidence is being created by that product itself just by looking at um, a washing machine we can have some idea 
ओके इसका कैपेसिटी कितना हो सकता है बाय जस्ट लुकिंग एट द बटन्स आई कम टू नो दैट व्हाट फैक्टर्स दे हैव इंक्लूडेड हाउ अपडेटेड इट इज एंड परफॉर्मेंस के लिए आई कैन आस्क द सेल्स पर्सन बट देन इन केस ऑफ सर्विस आई शुड रियली मे बी टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन दीज फैक्टर्स व्हिच वी जस्ट नाउ डिस्कस so that i can get some kind of evidence some kind of proof it is important that physical evidence is appealing to the customers very much you should also reflect how the business wants to be seen by its customers so what uh, perception you want to create about you in your newly uh, you know uh, the customers who you are going to acquire accordingly you need to present yourself values from customer communication how you are communicating so see these all efforts are we are doing for acquiring the new ones so another touch point here is how you are communicating to your customers so effective crm depends on quality client communication how well you communicate without personalized communication with clients business will struggle to market sell and support clients suppose uh, i am a call center person hmm? when i say that okay miss ragini like that uh, it creates some impact okay he knows my name no obviously he knows because you only have provided him with all the details but then if he takes your name inappropriately you know ragini ke jagah maybe rajini or you know this is what i have experienced that is why i am telling no he pronounces your name in a wrong way वो इट क्रिएट सम इम्पैक्ट और इसको नाम भी ठीक से लेने को नहीं आता कान के रीड द स्पेलिंग एंड करेक्टली प्रोनाउंस इट लाइक दैट सो सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स डू टेक प्लेस सो योर कम्युनिकेशन शुड बी प्रॉपर एंड देयर हैज टू बी सम क्वालिटी मेंटेन व्हाइल टॉकिंग कस्टमर्स एक्सपेक्ट सीआरएम सिस्टम्स टू हैव द एबिलिटी टू क्विकली एक्सेस 360 डिग्री कस्टमर व्यू in order to provide efficient and effective communication so when we are uh, uh, implementing crm for our uh, you know acquiring new customers we should have a clear understanding 360 degree customer view with us now when you are going to call your customers your know, base of customers you should have the uh, you know demographic information about your customers in detail so proper information is required we will finish this communication and then we'll stop for session communication can increase your popularity with clients improve how trustworthy your clients see you and can make tricky situation easier to resolve so when you have information about your customers you know it becomes easy for you to get connected maintaining healthy and productive relationship is the best way to ensure bright future for the business Yes. Now, you, when you have to build a relationship, when you have to acquire and retain, you should have a good um, communication system. <clears throat> customer relationship management is crucial because creating bond with existing customer ensures that you don't have to work on getting them again like new traffic. Okay? So this is from uh, the importance of communication from retention point of view. So while acquiring also the communication is important, and while retaining also. this uh, information is very much important so we are stopping here for today's session so we have seen the uh, when we are acquiring new customers how we can do it by talking to them by creating difference in terms of offering your product so uh, we talked about the customer value we are stopping here for today's session any doubts you have let me know and we'll meet tomorrow again till the time uh, just uh, go through the uh, topics which we discussed any doubts are there let me know so bye bye and have a nice day we are stopping here